Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. We are going to be rolling on Kickstarter here today for November 2018. So the very first one for November 2018 is Valhalla. And this one actually literally just noticed. I put it on my list and there's 10 minutes to go. So this is kind of funny and almost ridiculous at the same time. So if you want to talk about one project that I shouldn't have bothered mentioning because as we speak, the minutes are literally ticking down it's this one. Uh, you guys are still going to see this because I'm still going to put it in because I still think it's hilarious. But I just realized how close to the end of this Kickstarter it is. Um, it looks like it's going to make 300,000 Canadian. And this was one that I had my eye on. It's got that, uh, I don't know how else to say it. It's kind of like reminds me, of course, it's got the same theme as like Blood Rage, for instance, um, and stuff like that with the Vikings and everything. Um, so that drew me in immediately and then on top of it not that i'm a big viking game fan there's a lot of people that will throw money at everything from a certain theme per se and there's nothing wrong with that for me uh, i already have a game i already have blood rage this is not blood rage at all it's there's there from what i understand when i went through this one in the last um video it's very very different it's all done with cards now it looks like there's a couple miniatures here and there they might be representative of particular characters and things like that i haven't played this one myself but i have gone through this entire kickstarter and i definitely recommend that you guys check it out as well as check my prior video because i went into more detail about my thoughts on this one uh but i'm not going to go through it a second time because it's going to end in eight minutes and if you didn't get in on it already you might have missed the boat now the question might be is there going to be a pledge manager yes which means sometimes if these things have pledge managers, they also have late pledges. So you might get lucky and be able to jump in. So that's another reason why I will leave this in the video. The second Kickstarter project is Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice. Yeah, like really, Assassin's Creed. Like I can't believe this. Uh, these guys got the license to this thing. This is really cool. And when I saw this, I remembered how much time I enjoyed this universe. I spend a lot of time and there's a lot of people out there that spent a decent amount of time playing one of the games through the Assassin's Creed video game lineup. There is a bunch of them. Uh, if I remember correctly, I finished the first one, the second one. I literally found everything in the game and I think I went into the third one. Forget if the pirate, the, bl the black flag was the fourth one or not, but I think that's where I stopped. And I didn't stop because I didn't like it. I think the pirate one was actually the coolest one out of all of them. Um, that I played, although I didn't play any after that, so I shouldn't really say that. But uh, the coolest one that I had seen up to that point. And uh, just one more note on the video game, that one was a phenomenal one, um, but I just kind of was burnt out at that point. Uh, that's really what ended up happening was I'd played enough of these things. Uh, similar to GTA, I'd gone to every area of the map to try and find every little token that I could possibly find. And I think when more of these just started releasing, it felt it started to feel like work every time one of these things released to me because I had this like completionist mentality of like, I got to find everything here. Uh, but this is bringing me back because I have not cared about an Assassin's Creed product since that time frame. And that's been a while. Um, so, hey, a board game about Assassin's Creed, I already understand the backstory. So that's kind of a plus. This one has 18 days to go. It's made over $686,000 Canadian, which is crazy. Um, that's really good. And you can see here, these are the projects that are done by the, the creator prior, V Commandos and Assassin's Creed. This is something I do every time a, a Kickstarter project launches. Always check to see the prior uh, projects and look into them. It's interesting to see whether the, the, the game has come up before and failed funding and come back and been revised, or if it's the first time creator, then you're not going to have much of a back, you know, you're not going to have much information to go on, but that's something that to always do. It's got a lot of backers. A lot of people are jumping in on this. It's a very popular IP. Um, it's really interesting. Like I, I went through this one before. So I've seen this already. I've already gone through this page and I definitely recommend you guys, if it's being featured in this video, I'm recommending that you essentially go check it out. At least just check it out. Uh, at the end of the day, it's either for you or it's not for you. You'll determine that on your own. But I just thought this was one that was really cool because it does have the miniature thing going on. So, of course, some people are going to be grinding their teeth already because they're like, oh, my gosh, there's so many miniature games out. And you are 100% correct. At a certain point, you want to just stop with the miniature purchasing. And I feel your pain on that. Um, but there's an element to this one that makes it, uh, I don't know, it's, it's not an overwhelming amount. At least it doesn't seem like that. So I'm really interested to see how the gameplay of this one works. And I've been following it a little bit. Got a rough idea. I'm not going to try to explain it uh, 
just through voice here because I feel like that would be um, an absolute nightmare. But I recommend that you check out this particular one. If you pledge for it at the $158 level, there seems to only be one pledge level. So I guess that's nice. It makes it nice and simple. You're either in or you're out. Um, I think you might be able to get into the pledge manager for a dollar sometimes. There's actually a lot of great, F like they've gone ahead, put a whole bunch of questions in here that people would like to know. So, you know, are you going to get the free mini? So I think there was a 24 hour window. If you pledge at least a dollar, you get the free, um, uh, you get the free mini and stuff like that. So that's cool. Um, and then of course, uh, although this won't help. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can actually go ahead and just back for a dollar. You won't be helping the project unlock stretch goals, but you can still get access to the pledge. So this is another one of those ones where sometimes it's worth it to pledge a dollar. I do this sometimes uh, for projects like that, just so that I can kind of see whether or not I'm really sold on it, but you're going to know. I mean, you might open this up and say it's Assassin's Creed. I played every game. I love the universe. I'm already buying it. And if that's the case, go for it. Um, but again, do your research, make sure the gameplay is actually good for you and uh, go from there. So you're going to get a bunch of, eight, you're going to get 87 miniatures, which is a lot. I'm sure the stretch goals add to this. Look at all this stuff. That is a lot of stuff. Thieves, you got crossbowmen, you got 10 agile guards, 10 seekers, 10 brutes, 10 horsemen. Pretty cool miniatures in there. Tank, evil cannon, beam elements. Yeah, I mean, the production looks really good. Pretty happy. I mean, like, if you're, if you're looking for it to fall into line with what you'd expect in video games, it looks good. The tiles are interesting. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. Again, it, it's hard to gauge that stuff. Like everything else looks fine, but I look at the tiles and I'm like, hmm, I wonder if that's going to be, like when we see the overhead shot of the board, I feel like what's gonna make this one difficult and what I think would have been cool, maybe they've already resolved this, I'll have to go down and check, but like having some type of platform thing going on where it actually, because Assassin's Creed is all about different platform and different levels. It's parkour, like hardcore parkour all over the place. So you're, bouncing from the street level to the roof level to another roof level to a balcony like you're bouncing around all over the place and i think in a game like this if that's the mentality here with this which it seems to be you got you got roofs you can jump onto that i saw in some of the gameplay videos as well as the streets and stuff you might want some elevation there so what i'm going to check really quick to see is whether they added that in because i bet you any money people have been crying for that um and it would be really cool if they did they wouldn't really have to do too too much to raise it up but i guess it would kind of add a lot more miniatures and then the, the game starts getting a little bit bloated the other thing too is for that kind of stuff oh here we go these are great actually this is another thing when i saw this i thought this was a fantastic way to highlight gameplay elements quickly and easily so there's there's a lot some people could learn from this kickstarter page because a lot of kickstarter pages do not talk about gameplay in a quick concise way like this like here's your memory envelopes this is roughly how they work you can get a quick idea the towers if you're moving around this is how you jump on top of a tower or jump from a tower down to the just like the old ones you kind of go on top of a tower the idea is you reveal a bunch of locations or tokens around you within your bird's eye view then you jump down off the building and land into a, a pile of hay and stuff like that so it's got that vibe going for it and i'm sure if someone really loves the game they're going to build a miniature or find a tower from another game they're going to make it work Make it look amazing. So you can you can kind of go down the road of blinging your game out on your own. Um, stealth here. So this is showing you how the stealth works in terms of whether you're exposed or not, whether you can get behind the guards and kill. That's kind of cool. Like I can see how this can translate into a really cool miniatures game if it's done right. Weapons, of course, regular fighting. Uh, trophies. So these are interesting. Each memory comes with a certain sync trophy. So um, it's an optional thing, I think. So based on your roles, you can actually collect these to sync memories up and stuff. It might unlock tr uh, trophies for you. You got leveling up. So you got your choose among three assassins, after two cards, blah, 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 for each memory. Next up, we have Deep Madness, the second printing. All right. This one I'm familiar with, guys. We just finished a showcase on the channel for it. And uh, wow, this thing has taken off at $883,000. Like they've almost hit a million dollars Canadian. Um, again, their pledge level goal was only 65. They did well past that. Uh, they have 6,234 backers as of right now, and there's only 48 hours to go. So by the time you're getting this video released to you, there's going to be a little bit less than that, maybe 36, maybe 40 something. Because uh, I'm going to try to get this out immediately. Um, but uh, if you're in the tail end of this, I've also already done the draw for the Deep Madness giveaway. So if you're the winner, 
Uh, I'm going to be contacting you very, very soon. This weekend has been crazy busy, but I'm going to be emailing that winner. I've already announced it. So if you don't even know if you've won yet, you should probably check the video because I haven't contacted you yet. So <laughs> go ahead and check the video quickly and get excited because the email is coming this weekend. Okay, so let's take a look at this one, but we're not going to deep dive into it because if you want to know more about this one, you can check the October Rolling on Kickstarter for more information. Some of you guys that come back here for this every month, this is going to be a little repeat, but I am going to just go through this really fast. I'm not really going to stop very, very much. I just want to talk about the fact that I really do think if you're looking for a game that is another level above a Zombicide, this is it. And what I say by that is this is not, like you cannot think that this is a Zombicide type or style of game it is literally like zombicide with three extra levels of strategy uh and then throw in the cthulhu thing on top of it so you got the cthulhu element and the hp lovecraft element adds a little bit of randomness in which were, was already there the second you have dice anyway but when you're talking about um you know how the characters die there's sanity and there's health and of course like most hp lovecraft games you're managing those two things in this one you're managing not only your health and sanity but madness which can be a result of your sanity flipping into madness as you take down monsters the horror from those monsters cause you to go mad so there's this w really cool system of like do I want to spit? So basically, instead of most games where it's like, uh, okay, for an action, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to focus, and I'm going to grab a token that allows me to reroll a die later, you just have four sanity. And you can use all four of those sanity to just reroll four dice. And you can take four sanity all in a row. Like just gather it all, gobble it all up, go crazy. But the problem with that is it's a risk reward. It can easily turn on you. And the game has it so that every single time you kill a monster, the horror rating on the card, which you can see if they actually do a quick, uh, they might have a picture of one of the cards here I can actually zoom in on. Uh, do, 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 where is it? So these are spawn cards. I probably just went past it. There we go. So there's these little horror numbers up in the top left uh, corner, and those are what hit you. So say, for instance, I rolled a bunch of dice and uh, I didn't like what I got, I have uh, five sanity, I could literally sit there and re-roll five times, five individual dice, five times, um, and basically just chalk up my sanity from zero to five. And then all of a sudden I'm capped. I can no longer re-roll using sanity. The downside is if I do succeed and kill a monster, so say I kill one of the really bad elite monsters, this thing throws three horror at me, and that three horror makes the sanity that I have on me from the re-rolls flip over from sanity to madness and when you get three madness tokens you have to take a madness card the advantage of not re-rolling and not taking sanity is if you kill a monster and it has horror it's almost like a reward so it helps you if you don't have sanity damage so in other words if i just went ahead with uh, one of the characters and i killed one of the monsters and i had no sanity at all on my card because i hadn't re-rolled anything this if i got a three i could pick three consciousness cards from the deck which is kind of the opposite of the madness card so one's good and one is bad it's just really cool it's like a nice interesting way to kind of give yourself a benefit for not uh, going a little bananas with the rerolls so that's i like that i like that a lot and i actually like the strategy of this like i want to if you want to know more about it check out the playthrough that i did uh it was very interesting because i felt during the playthrough very good and the game very, very quickly, depending on spawns and the number of spawns and things like that, can change your strategy. But it's not just, it really isn't like a Zombicide type strategy where you go, okay, like in Zombicide, I found it where if a spawn occurred, you were there was two ways, let's say, to get to the objective. Maybe two, sometimes three. But there's usually two and you're going, do I go left or do I go right? Oh, the spawn happened on the left, so I got to go right. Some of those decisions are kind of inherent. It's like... You'd be silly to do the, the, the wrong decision there because, hey, there's a horde of zombies right there. If you run into them, you're going to run into problems. This one's very different. There is many different routes out of these tiles. Every area of the tile has a door in almost all cases. Some of them don't, but most of them do. And so it's giving you constant options of movement all the time. And you're going, do I seal this door? Do I leave that door open? Do I run out this door? What's going to happen on the next turn? Which room is going to get spawned first? And some of this information is known, some of it's not. So it's it's really well designed. I really liked it. And I can't wait to actually dive into the expansions now that I've kind of gripped through the base game. Um, now, granted, I lost the playthrough, and I want to retry that scenario really bad now. Um, so this is basically 
high level overview of what I kind of enjoyed with it. If you want to know more about it, then go check it out. There is a ton of content for this. But again, remember, this is a miniature heavy game. There's a lot of boxes. And uh, if you don't have the space, then this might not be for you. But uh, it takes up about one full Calyx shelf space. Uh, I think I have four of those large box expansion boxes, boxes in there and the base box sitting in front of it and it fills that entire square. Uh, and I think there's even a few things that can't fit in there. But for the most part, it takes up one cube worth of space. Um, and of course, all the additional content they're adding to this Kickstarter probably will push that to two, <laughs> two Calyx uh, spots. So anyway, guys, I don't want to go into too much more detail on this one. I did talk about this one before. We had a lot of fun to showcase. I have unboxing videos for this as well. So go check those out. That'll give you all the information you need on Deep Madness. All right. So this one is called Rallyman GT by Holy Grail Games. They've created five games before, and I'm going to admit right off the top, I have never played any of them. However, this one, you know, basically grabbed my attention because I like cars. And at the first sight of taking a look through this Kickstarter, I noticed it was solo playable. They also do have, if you take a look right here, I'm just going to do a quick look. They show right here in the key features section here, solo players won't feel left out um, as the game's re uh, renowned. Solo mode is also back with full support. So it looks like the solo play is built into this one from the get-go, which is good. Um, it also gives you a game that you could play with other people as well. So I could see this being fun to play in both capacities. Uh, so solo players enjoy this because it look it like the gameplay in terms of the setup is very, very simplistic, quick, simple. And sometimes it's nice to have those games in your uh, collection, especially when you know you don't have hours upon hours to get a game down and out. Especially for solo play, it can be even better. This could be a really easy game to travel with and uh, get on the table and play. And again, if you have any kind of connection to racing whatsoever, this is going to draw you in from the theme alone. So it's a roll and move racing game, if I didn't mention that already. So that's something to, to mention. So again, some people may run away from that because roll and move... Uh, even for dungeon crawlers makes some people go nuts. Uh, but again, this is kind of me. It, it works. It's a, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, you're moving a, a car in this case, you're racing. So I guess I can, I let that pass. And it looks like they have, a, they have a really unique way of kind of mitigating some of the dice rolls that are happening here. So that's kind of the side of it. I look at, I'm not typically a fan of roll and move at all, really, especially when it comes to dungeon crawlers. Um, I like set movement or something like this um, or something or maybe movement that changes all the time, but in a way that's not just rolling a die where you can get, you know, consistently screwed over multiple times. Um, but it looks cool. So I wanted to point this one to you guys because it's nice to always have with amongst all of the massive Kickstarters that are the big, big ones that everyone flocks to. It's nice to point out some of these ones that are smaller and uh, give them some attention. So I really thought this was one that looked pretty cool. So if you're interested in racing in any way, check out Rallyman GT. This next Kickstarter project has, again, only 46 hours to go on it. So again, a very, very tight window. Most of these ones I'm mentioning here seem to be in literally their final couple days. Uh, this one's from Deepwater Games called Welcome To, and it's the second printing, and it's also got new neighborhood expansions. Now, I missed out completely on the first time this one ran past but this one does have solo play, and that's one of the reasons why I was interested in it. Uh, so there is a solo mode in here, even though it doesn't show up in the main section. I want to see if I can actually find it through here. There it is. So new solo mode rules and stretch goals. So if you want to find out more about how the solo AI works to set up the game turns and scoring, how it all works, to see whether or not this is a game you'd want to check out solo-wise, there is your update. Update number eight is going to give you all the information that you need in order to make that decision. Uh, this one is different. It's not a roll and write. It's a, uh, oh, what do they call it again? Something in a flip. Um, draw, I don't, uh, where is it? There it is. Flip and fill. Flip and fill. It was really cool because it was like, I guess there is some writing involved too. Again, I haven't played this one, so I can't, I can't say whether this is something that, uh, you know, is, can't recommend this as like, oh, this is a great game type thing. I haven't played it, but it's something that intrigues me. I'm kind of going, hmm. Looks like the purpose of this one is you're trying to build houses and they also have themes here like this one's uh, in this spooky neighborhood players build houses they can choose to go trick-or-treating and they can circle either a ghost or a candy so there's all these different little things going on you got this cool little board here so all these different neighborhood plots everywhere i don't know it just it what does this remind me of this kind of has this like um uh, it kind of reminds me of like theme hospital and you guys remember that game from way back in the day or who was that made that 
Uh, there's a bunch of the, well, there's a ton of theme games, uh, theme park and stuff like that. But like, it's it's got that vibe going for it, and for whatever reason, I I just like it. <laughs> so this is one to uh, to check out if you're interested in this type of a gameplay. And there's also gameplay videos here, which is great, so you can go check those out. And that's all I'm gonna say about this one. So they've got three thousand six hundred sixty-seven backers. That's pretty solid, and made uh, almost two hundred fifty thousand Canadian. So that's really good. Uh, where, how do they do in the first one? I wonder. Uh, herbal. Oh, that's right. Deepwater Games is the guys that did Herbalism. No, never mind. I never played this one. I was thinking of a completely different game. My mistake. Okay. So. There we go. Okay, so that is pretty much all I want to say for that one. And again, I already gave you update number eight is the one you want to check out. If you're looking for pledge levels, 25 bucks uh, for the starter home. It gives you the main copy and extra stretch goals. Um, you can add additional ones if you want. The intern unlocks thematic score pad refills, city plans, blah, blah, blah. So that's pretty cool. The veteran architect. Oh, you got a play mat with that one. That's the director. Oh my gosh. What do you get for the director? Wow, okay. Where's the pledge levels down here? I want to see a picture of these things. Probably under, oh, there we go. Yeah, here's a better visual, guys. So starter home, base game, pack a double-sided dry race, intern, four thematic neighborhood sheets. Oh, this is a city plans, veteran one. You get pack a double-sided dry race. Oh, you get those anyway. Playmat, sorry, that's what you get different. The playmat's cool. I love play, I don't know what it is. I love playmats. I've been on a play, I've had, Playmats involved in both of my playthroughs. I try my best to always use them, even from the beginning of my channel. If there was a playmat for a game, I just have to get it. It just, I don't know what it is, but it always adds that extra element to the game that just, just tips it over the edge. Like when I'm playing Arkham Horror the card game, if I'm playing with a playmat, it just, it's so much better. I guess it's better because you don't want to be looking at like the tablecloth that day. And what if your tablecloth is like a bunch of Thanksgiving leaves or like just a bunch of leaves and some turkey or something like this. And you're like, nah, it doesn't really match the theme all that well. So it's kind of nice to have an actual mat that uh, draws you in. So anyway, that's pretty cool. I think that's all I'm going to say about this one. This is one worth checking out for solo play. Uh-oh, it's back. Sword and Sorcery Ancient Chronicles. The best co-op fantasy dungeon crawler is back with an exciting new standalone core set and campaign to play solo or up to five people. So I'm reading that right off of the Kickstarter page. Pretty cool. So this is literally going to be a new standalone core set. So if you don't own any of the previous Sword and Sorcery stuff and you decide to hold off or you weren't interested at the time, this might be the time to check it out. Um, I did a full playthrough. I did unboxings of this one. We did a full showcase of Sword and Sorcery. The other one, the first one that came out, and I really enjoyed it. I still have it in my collection. It's not going to go away. And I really want to get it back to the table with friends at some point. And I also want to tackle it solo as well. I really like the story connection with this one and how that progressed throughout the campaign. So that was cool. I like the mechanics of the gameplay. There is, I will admit, there is just a little bit of fiddliness with it. But the gameplay and the look and feel and the vibe you get when you're playing is worth that little bit extra fiddliness. There's a couple spots there, and dungeon crawlers fall into this a lot, and it's very hard not to when you try to give it a kind of a, a grand scale. As soon as you take a dungeon crawler from being a very simplistic one-off scenario with not much going on, and usually when it doesn't involve campaign play, you won't have you know issues with filliness usually. But as soon as you you know add those aspects of campaigns and and scenarios connecting between each other keeping track of some stuff keeping track of what's going on in the, in the combat things like that stuff kind of gets a little bit more um fiddly i guess so with this one it was more so in how the combat's handled and stuff like that some of the the combats handle fantastically in terms of how they do it they use dice and they use um uh, a bunch of symbols and icons on the cards but i think the way that you arrive at your final value sometimes can be a little bit confusing the first time through you can kind of go did i do this right or did i do this wrong but once you get that down which is kind of typical for most dungeon crawlers you're good to go and you're fine it's just a little hurdle you have to get past but the game is awesome and this is what i'm definitely definitely getting this one uh, for me personally is high on the list i want to get it so just so you guys know more about what this is this actually isn't going to come after the sword and sorcery even though technically it's releasing after this is actually the prequel. So this is going to be the standalone course set, but story-wise, this actually happens prior to 
the original Kickstarter. That's right. So again, these guys have 594,000 uh, behind this project. 30,714. I believe this one's going to have a pledge manager. Let me just do a quick check to see if that's the case. Uh, oh, one thing, guys, that uh, that is kind of interesting about this one is they are throwing in a bunch of items that uh, if you're original Kickstarter backer, you're going to you're going to get doubles of some things. So that was kind of a question, which is why it's here. Like, hey, uh, can you offer a pledge level for backers from the previous one that don't have the items we already have because they're kind of adding those in? So that was kind of a downside because it's like, all right, well, I'd rather pay a little less money and not get that extra stuff. So this is all the normal stuff. You want this because this is like the main box and main game. But then you get into this stuff and you go. Those are nice because having these are good. Um, extra dice are good. This is good. This is a duplicate. I already have a card holder of a different color. Uh, that's new. This is new. This is new. This is new. Uh, we're also, this is all new. Looking for the doubles here. There was some stuff in here. I can't remember where it was. Maybe, hmm, maybe it wasn't that really that big of a deal. <laughs> maybe that's why they're not doing anything about it. So people were saying that there was a bunch of stuff in here that they already had, but I'm I'm not seeing, I mean, yes, you're going to, oh, I guess if you were like, okay, I don't want the extra dice again because I already have a bunch of dice. That's true. I've already got a ton of dice. I don't need the bag. I don't need the dice. I don't need the card holder. Like if you start knocking things out, you can nickel and dime it and be like, oh, well, that will save me 20 bucks. I don't know. At the end of the day, if you're planning on paying $120 anyway, saving $10 or $20 at that point, it is super minor. Plus, at the end of the day, don't you want to have some of that content separated so that you don't have to go running looking for your dice between two different boxes and your card holders and all that stuff? It's kind of nice. I don't know. Personal preference, I guess, on that. Uh, so, guys, if you are interested in a dungeon crawler that is solid, well-built, has a really cool story, has a really cool tiered enemy kind of thing going on. So, basically, every tier is colored. So, this is another thing. You don't want to paint your enemies. You don't have to. They're literally pre-colored similar to what Simon, I guess, is doing now with their, you know, when they introduce like a clan, they typically color them all one thing. With this, it's it's level of difficulty. It's like, oh, greens are easy, blue is medium, and red is bad and hard. And you got your master enemies in purple. So that's cool. You don't have to paint them if you don't want to. Everything's already there. That's nice and handy. Of course, the tile artwork and stuff in this game is fantastic. Like the artwork on the cards, awesome. But you can see when you start looking at like the AI cards for stuff, there's a lot of icons here, and that's what I was trying to get at. Maybe I did a really poor job of explaining it. This is the kind of stuff that will throw your head for a loop the first time you play it, because you'll be going, okay, I'm attacking with this stuff down here, and I'm going to reference this part over here. Does it have a resistance? Do I have a resistance? Uh, does the wind change uh, today? You know, all that kind of stuff. And then, boom, now I've got my final result. Um, so there is a little bit of that, but don't worry. When you get over that hurdle, which will happen after your first playthrough, your first game, which I did easily through... Um, or at least I did uh, on, I actually did mine while filming. I think I was learning as I went for that one, which I don't do anymore. Um, but I did on that one and it was, there was some hurdles there. But once I came out the other side of it, I was like, okay, I get the gist of this now. And I didn't really have a problem with it after the fact. So it's like most games. You need one playthrough to really kind of work the kinks out. Um, but yeah, this is one I would highly recommend. This is really cool. And if you didn't get the first Kickstarter, this might be the time to jump in. So again, check it out, do your research with all of my selections here. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so Monumental. This is another one that's kind of interesting and I kind of came out of nowhere. I don't know as much. This is one of the ones I know very little about, but these guys have done six projects before. Uh, Fun Forge and they've done, oh, it looks like they've actually done this one before and they canceled it. That's interesting. I didn't actually notice that the first time through. That's a shame on my part because I normally check that stuff. Uh, it looked kind of looks the same for the most part mm, i don't know maybe yeah the kickstarter page could have used some work it looks pretty pretty bare bones it's like here's our product boom boom done um i can kind of see i can kind of see why they might have jumped back there uh the new one has i think a much better presentation uh, let me just see here yeah I mean, it has a, it, they obviously used the picture from before, but they've added quite a bit here, presented it better. The graphic art was a lot, a lot better. Looks a lot better now. Much easier to see the different miniatures. So that's the thing, guys. Like, sometimes these projects will do this. Like, they will come out once, and they'll be like, ah, we jumped the gun. We were really excited to get this going. But 
Hey, you can see right here, 20 solo mode cards. So of course, I'm, I'm mentioning this one because it has solo play, and I know it. it's it's actually interesting. This one says it is a monumental, is the next generation civilization built uh, game, sorry, with a mix of innovative mechanics taking the best from deck building and 4X games. The deck building and 4X games, if this is your thing, or either of those things are your thing, apparently they're intertwined in this game. That's pretty cool. Uh, you can play from one to four players, and if I do a quick search here, for solo, there is a mention of solo right here. So play solo or up to four players. It takes about 90 to 120 minutes to play. If I go to updates and we look for solo, I think, yes, these guys have information about the solo mode right here. So update 24 is the one you're looking for. It's going to, this is this is exactly it. So people are going like, hey, cool that you have solo, but give us some information. Let us know whether this is worth backing. If you want to know, this is the section for you. This is going to tell you whether or not this is worth it or not. There may also be updates that came after this that might be worth talking about. Um, so be sure, make sure you check those ones too. Um, you might have to peruse through quite a few because it looks like there's actually 45 updates. So that's, that's a lot of information to go through. Their FAQ has 44 questions. So they're extremely active on the questions. So I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if, if you have a question at all, they've probably got it here. Um, so interesting, interesting. So yes, there's going to be a pledge manager. Wow, that's a lot of questions. That's really abnormal, actually. But it's it's good to see that. It just it what that proves is it proves the people that have created this really care, and they're actually going ahead and. Oh, these guys are the ones that punched out uh, the collector's edition of. Okay. Interesting. Well, that piques my interest even more now. I mean, this thing's being re it's really successful. Six hundred and thirty-one thousand. That's really good. I don't know. I'm curious. I'm curious. This is from France, by the way. Um, that's kind of... one thing I will say is I really like the. It's weird because they're almost like they're not hex. Yeah, they're definitely a di it's a definitely a different look, but I like it. It's cool. It's got that uh, that exploration vibe going on to it. So this is one I'm going to look into a little bit further. If you guys actually know more about this one, let me know in the comments below. I've looked at this one a little bit through the comments and some of the videos here. Do we actually have any? Who is it that did video? gameplay oh they did looks like they did their own videos that's actually interesting i'm actually really surprised that they're doing this well and they didn't did they not punch this out to, oh there we go never mind. i was gonna say i was like they didn't punch it out to anybody else space tower oh my gosh never mind there's a ton of people here so yeah if you want information on this there's a whole bunch whole bunch of videos to watch so that's good it's good to have that information sorry about uh, going up and down and scrolling really fast so if you want to check this out from a deck building or 4X game perspective, Monumental may be worth your time. Oh, another project with only 52 hours left to go as of this recording is Street Masters Aftershock. This is one that I did a showcase for. This is a blast, guys. If you guys are interested in a, another miniatures game, I know there's a lot of miniatures games. Uh, this is one, though, that I will tell you setup time is nothing. So first off, you're going to assume with this one, based on just its looks, you're going to go through and go like, oh my gosh, the number of miniatures in this just looks ridiculous. It looks crazy. These guys have really put a lot of effort uh, into this project. And those guys are uh, Brady and Adam Sandler. And they went nuts with this one. Um, they did a really good job. And actually, they've, they've implemented a couple things here that are actually really cool. So first off, this box, amazing. Look at how they've actually got ahead and shown how this is all broken down. They've got a full storage box for everything. You've got additional storage tokens on the side. You've got token storage here. You've got card storage here. You've got map tile storage. Like literally, the box is going to fit everything you have in it in one. And I've heard that it will fit into one space of a calic shelf, which is awesome because I love it when a game can just be neatly punched into a shelf without any issue. Okay, so that's enough about the storage stuff. First off, art-wise and, and gameplay-wise, guys, this is awesome. Like, I I don't review games on the channel and things like that. It's just something I, I get away from. But this one I highly recommend. Uh, I know, like, these guys have their hands in projects that have been fulfilled. They have uh, successful projects behind them. So I have no qualms about uh, saying that they, they've got something special here. And they're continuing to build on that, which is awesome. And it's exciting. And they're also adding in things like this Essence of Evil expansion. So more content for you to fight. They've got some more stages in development. 
all this kind of stuff. So first off, the Street Masters tier is $109. Get you all this stuff. Again, this is the first thing that most people get scared of. They'll look at this and go, look at all the miniatures. Uh, this probably takes hours to set up. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. Everything has, to, there's dividers, like actually dividers for the cards in this game. So when you're picking a, you know, you're, if you want to actually see it all set up, you can actually go check out my setup video and it'll show you how quick this game gets to the table. But literally you have a number of bases, which are put on a number of the miniatures, which are the enemies that you're going to be facing. Um, and it's it's limited to a certain amount of enemies. So you basically pre-clip these colored bases onto a number of minis. And so depending on which um, you know faction of enemies you're going up against, it'll say, okay, go ahead and clip the bases on, you know, you know, X amount of enemies, might be 12, 15, somewhere in that range. You clip them all on, you put them to the side, and they're already ready. Your cards will actually tell you which ones get pulled, what color they are, but the base is already on them and it makes things super easy. You'll have a lot of miniatures, but your actual scenario you're playing only calls for a certain number of them. And if you have the, and the great, great thing about it too is they're set up before the game starts. So unlike games like, uh, I keep using Zombicide a lot, but is, unlike Zombicide where you have billions of monsters in a box and you gotta go hunt for that monster that you just pulled from a spawn card, this one, you during the setup, you've already pulled those um, um, miniatures out and clip the bases on them, making it super simple to grab and put them in. So very, very cool. The gameplay is also awesome. It's also not a table hog. You can play this thing on a tiny table. Like this is a tile. It's one tile, but look at how many hexes there are on this thing. And you can run around here, there's objectives. Every single scenario is different and presents you with different challenges and problems and objectives. Your cards in front of you are all laid out. There's the, again, this is a game based on like Street Fighter and stuff like this and all those Double Dragon, all that kind of stuff. So think combos. It's all about combos. It also brings over that wonderful mechanic that I loved from Arcadia Quest, uh, which was kind of like the exploding dice mentality where you roll a die and if you hit a certain critical, essentially, you get to take another die and keep rolling. So your crappy combo could turn into a massive hit. Uh, and it's really fun to go up against an enemy and go, I've got no chance, roll your dice, see a bunch of criticals, keep rolling more dice, see more criticals, and just the excitement that builds up in it, it's very cool. I love it. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, again, I've got my videos in here as well. There's a whole bunch of videos. So if you want to see like any content here, a lot of people have actually checked this one out. A lot of people in the solo community have checked this out. And uh, it's really good. I would definitely recommend that you uh, that you take a look deeper into this one if you haven't already. Um, but this is their second Kickstarter for Street Masters. They had created an original one back here, Street Masters Rise of the Kingdom, and this is the one I missed out on. Uh, I also missed out on Brook City because these both went by before I got a chance to play the original Street Masters uh, just in time for this Kickstarter. And man, did I ever miss out. Uh, <laughs> so I'm happy that I'm kind of... Uh, uh, this is more centered in my focus now, and I'm actually paying attention to this one. So this is one, guys, that I would definitely recommend for solo players. Next up, we have the Ever Rain, and this is from Grimlord Games. They have four hundred and seventy-one thousand dollars, three hundred and or sorry, three thousand four hundred and fifty-nine uh, backers, and four days left on this one to get in on it. Uh, this one has solo play inside the box, so it's a part of the integral design from the beginning. It's a cooperative, story-driven exploration game, and I love exploration games. I love games where the map reveals as you go because the replayability just goes through the roof um, in terms of being able to replay it and not have the exact same encounters happen the exact same way. Uh, it's it's kind of left to be untold as to how many encounters there are and how often that could you know be repeated, but it's cool. That automatically adds replay uh, value when you have a game that's built like that. Very similar to like Discover Lands Unknown, that type of thing. Like, you know, certain things in there you might see again, but you may not see them in the same order, uh, which changes the gameplay, changes your strategy and everything else. So this is really cool. It's all basically Cthulhu, essentially. Uh, or I shouldn't say Cthulhu, but it's all based in H.P. Lovecraft's work. Um, and so that's all that stuff's pulled over here, like the Arkham Eldritch Horror vibe. And you're going to be going ahead as the world is going down the tubes and there's this huge ancient one trying to destroy everything. And you're actually in a ship, which you actually have on the board as you explore around. You have enemy ships coming after you. You have basic crew miniatures, special crew miniatures, all the monsters that are going to come after you. The, of course, the avatar, the old one itself. you got a really cool board. First off, the board looks awesome. Uh, these player boards are really cool. So you got boats, actually have boats. So you'll be representing not only yourself as a miniature on the sea, but as uh, the player board itself will be your boat. And you're going to have 
your miniatures on the boat moving around doing different actions you're going to be setting up your crew and stuff like this you've got um, port tiles of course you can stop at ports and do different things uh, custom designed dice pretty cool uh, so yeah like the the actual production on this one looks cool and uh it looks really good I, I have no issues with this one at all this looks interesting the free add-on i don't know if this was here when it first actually went up um so i think this was actually added afterwards maybe this is a result of stretch goals he's all unlocked and they just bundled them but this is a whole bunch of stuff you get for free now for backing so that's something to think about um and then these are these are more unlocked content so i don't know if this unlock content is mixed in with this like the bloated man is he in here no so it actually is extra so he they literally added this whole thing for free these are more stretch goals so of course some of these you're not going to get anywhere else because if it says kickstarter exclusive it's not coming back unless of course this project gets reshot uh through a second print um and the actual designer decides to bring that back so some of these are going to be kickstarter uh, you know, they'll be Kickstarter stretch goals, uh, but uh, some of them are exclusive and you'll never see them again. Some extra sea events, extra island exploration cards. Those are huge. Those types of things are what adds in replayability too. You got add-ons. So if you're not happy with just the content from the base, you've got this. Another expansion to add into things. You've got metal coins if you want to make things fancy. Acrylic co uh, tokens. Uh, battle. Oh, these. Whoa. Those are crazy cool. Are those see-through they almost okay that's mm. okay hold on a second here five marvel of, oh, okay so the marble ones are solid but these have the that's cool that's actually really i like that like the see-through gem effect is what they're saying these ones are oh man see i don't normally get sucked in dice purchases because typically i'm like you know if the game has enough dice that's good enough but uh those look so the gem ones look super cool super cool it'd actually be really interesting to see whether or not you could actually get a pack like this and then have all the marble ones switched out for gem i'd probably go gem all the way i just like this that, that see-through look would be really cool looking oh my gosh dice tower and everything they went crazy with this thing they've got all kinds of stuff so this has actually grown quite a bit from when i saw it last so they've put some work into this for sure content upgrades this is a big one We're, they're on the cusp of actually getting this content upgrade uh, a couple more stretch goals but a couple uh, some more money being pledged into it. it's going to actually give every player a unique uh, ship sculpt which is cool boards for every player i think that are going to be unique maybe instead of being generic and uh that's really that's really cool additional content so all these little social ones are doing well this is this is an interesting one guys i would definitely recommend you look into this one a little bit further um I think there's a lot I think there's a lot of cool stuff going on in this. I'm liking what I'm seeing anyway. Oh, they got the rule book out. That's good too. So that's a really good thing. If you see rule books sitting in Kickstarters, you know they're serious. They've done a lot of work up front. So check that out. Um they've also got gameplay videos they've been posting. Some of this I've actually watched a couple of these already. Um and I talked about this in the October Kickstarter, but I wanted to show this again because they're near the end and I really do think this is cool so another one to four player cooperative story driven exploration game for you guys to check out this next project is called dark venture an adventure card game by rob lemon so again i love picking out projects that are smaller in size some of them they're giving kind of uh, these huge kickstarter projects are coming out and of course most of the attention gets drawn to those ones because they're top of the list in popularity or most funded and all that kind of stuff but it's really cool to kind of dig into kickstarter sometimes and go for some of the new releases and just look through the list because sometimes you find some gems buried in the rough and this one looks really cool i like the art style of this is called dark venture so you're exploring a dark fantasy uh future with your hero you got quests to win in this retro one to four player adventure game so again it's the first time this individual has created a project but they did make their funding goal uh this individual is located or at least the this this uh, game is being uh, created from new york new york and has 851 backers nine more days to go to check it out if you're interested and 51,000. so it's it's successfully funded at this point and this is one of the reasons why i i looked at it and i was like this looks cool i don't know the art style is certainly it well it's got the cartoon it's it, hmm it's gritty i don't know how you know what it almost reminds me of a little bit is uh maximum apocalypse but just a little bit more grittier than that in terms of the artwork um but i like it it's uh i don't know it's very vibrant too um and i like the I, this is it's just different it's very different looking and i'm it kind of drew me in just from the from the look of it uh so far 
So let's go ahead and try to find the solo section here that I already looked through. So play competitively, cooperatively, or solo, a short game or long, 20 or 40 minutes per player. If you're playing this solo, it's going to take about 20 to 40 minutes. Um, and as you get more and more familiar, of course, it'll go faster. Uh, so choose your hero. This is the first thing you do. There's eight playable heroes. You've got some guidebooks. So a universe and three books. Tell your story and govern the world dark venture. Explains the game. Location describes each location as it's played. You're going to go ahead and pick through one of your eight playable heroes. Character cards. Four followers. 17 enemies. And you've got a whole mix of cards here. 57 items. 44 of them are unique. That's cool. Uh, story discovered through exploration. So you're gonna move down. I love this. This look ah, that's so cool. I did. I like, I like that. I like that. I like the art style. It, it draws me. It makes me want to do. You kind of like run around in there and figure out what's going on. So location cards, of course. This is really cool. This is the this this is the colorful stuff that when I was they were showing the picture above, I was like, what is that? Uh, but it's actually just the uh, time tracking. It looks like through the day. So sunrise to sunset. Uh, hero quest point track here deck mats so again this is where like the maximum apocalypse thing is kicking into my brain i'm going some of the, like the game is not maximum apocalypse that's what I'm, not what i'm trying to say but some of the things i'm seeing here reminded me of that like this deck mat for instance uh, it's used differently though totally different in the other game um i guess that's what happens when you start playing and you have been playing like hundreds of games different games is that at a certain point things just start crossing over in your head uh, so here's your hero and dashboards, character record cards. Got some cubes, got some dice. It's cool. <clears throat> I, I don't think that this one is... They got some videos, so that's good. I don't think this one's overly expensive either. So that's another reason I like focusing on some of these. If I find ones that I really think are interesting and cool. These are, are, are... I like taking gambles on projects that are first created when the, when the, when the dollar value is not you know, crazy. So this is a great one to potentially, if you were kind of looking to throw something out there to see whether or not it ends up being a, a better game than you think it might be or you're just interested in this project after you're, you know you do your research it's not an expensive pledge um so i'm actually still on the fence on this one too because i need to look into it even even further but i'm gonna go in here and see so here we go so there's the solo question they've got a nice like explanation of how this whole solo thing is going to work out i'm just looking to see if the pledge manager mention is in here anywhere uh doesn't look like the, P uh, the print and play is an unlock stretch goal we're offering as the pdf kit after the campaign for download to any backer including one dollar back so if you back for a dollar you can get a print and play so that's cool so if you want to just back for a dollar get the print and play play that see if you like it i guess the downside of the print and play is there's some work involved printing it and getting it all ready that's one of the reasons i avoid those most cases um, i usually just try to watch uh gameplay videos and it looks like as i showed you guys way down here there was a bunch. Uh, actually, Undead Viking did one. Um, the one? Maybe it was theirs. They they did videos in here somewhere. There it is. Game setup. One game turn. How to and look at that? How to play is here. Too. All right. And last but not least is one that actually reminded me of the original game that came out on Kickstarter, Perdition's Mouth Abyssal Rift. I believe it was called. This is a mini expansion to that larger game, and it was quite a big game. Uh, so this is actually meant to come in at a much lower price point. So if you have been playing this particular game and have the base game or have any of this product uh, that's currently released for this one already coming your way from, I believe, their second Kickstarter, this is, I think, the third one, adding another mini expansion in. So they had one here that was done, or is this, uh, right here. So this is the first. Actually, no, they've done a couple. My mistake. So... Where I learned about it was right here in the revised edition. So they did this one first, which is the main base game. Then they did uh, per uh, Perdition's Mouth Trader Guard expansion. And I believe they came back with a revised edition for everything, if I'm not mistaken. And then they just released this mini expansion. So this is a, uh, a game that actually works on a rondelle. So it's, it's actually really cool. And I sure hope I'm pronouncing that correctly because I think I've heard it said a couple different ways. Um, and some people are definitely saying it wrong. Could be me. Um... But uh, basically, this has all the information you need to know about what's going on here. So as the stretch goals go, they'll get unlocked. This is actually not a very high, like there wasn't a high requirement for uh, to fund. It, it is, this is a trustworthy project. They've made uh, multiple Kickstarter projects before, and they've always succeeded their goal, and they've always uh, got their products to their backers as well. This one's raised 20000 of a $4,000 goal, which is very low. There's still 13 days to go, so they're probably halfway through their campaign or something. So it'll probably get close to fifty by the time it's done. 
Um, but again, it's going to add more content to what is already a very unique and interesting game. And I've also heard it's actually really tough too. Um, so it's one of those games where it doesn't show it here, but essentially you, there's a lots of playthroughs. You can go check it, of course, if you want to know more, but there's the rondelle and you can see each map is kind of like a fold out map. So they have a lot of these, every scenario is built like this. And basically how you play the game is you start an entrance and you'll go through, you'll start, you'll play through a scenario. And depending on which route you take to leave, you're almost moving through the catacombs and moving through underground and you might pop out, um, you know, you might take, take a, you know, entrance or, or I should say exit A versus exit B and that will actually take you down a separate scenario. So that, like so scenarios branch off of each other, but just depending on your decisions of wh you know where to leave. And sometimes if your route gets cut off or something, you need to go a different way, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of tactical gameplay in there and the rundle is actually really cool. It's one of the best parts of this game. And it's done really uniquely. I haven't seen this done in any other game this cool. Uh, so it's an interesting one, but it also does kind of have a very dark uh, subject matter. It's kind of a cultist kind of vibe going on with it. So if you are kind of opposed to that mindset then uh, or have any issues with that, then maybe check into it just to be sure that you're cool with it. But uh, for, you know, for me and stuff like that, it's, it's, uh, it's not an issue. Uh, especially because I'm a huge fan of like Arkham Horror, Elder Horror and all that stuff. And there's always that, that little bit in there, but uh, it's, um, this is definitely one I would recommend. But again, this is, it's, it's kind of a, it's hard to feature this one here in this video because this is for a mini expansion. It's not really for like a base game that you can actually obtain. I don't know if they're going to allow you to get the base game through this one though. So let me just see here. One copy of Perdition's Mouth, Cannibals, How? Oh. Oh, wow. What is the cannibal? Is that the same one? Oh no, that's the normal. What is the extra? Oh, hideout. Oh, right. Because the hideout, I think, was a. Oh no, you can't get the base game. There it is. So the hideout was an expansion that you could get uh, partway through. Eventually, I think, in the revised edition, they included it inside of the base. So that's why it's not mentioned down here. If you get this one, you get the hideout expansion inside the revised edition one. And then you also, of course, get the stuff that's coming out with this particular Kickstarter. So this is the one you want to go after if you have nothing from uh, their content whatsoever. But a lot of people are coming back to get additional content, especially the backers that already own this product. So that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that one. Some of them are limited too. Um, so there's certain ones here I guess you can go all out. Cultist with a special barbecue sauce. <laughs> uh feast that's crazy so there there i guess this would be the one that's like oh i missed out on everything i guess there is your chance to get everything so some people have just gone like that they're just like screw it i'm going all in so that's that i will uh that's actually gonna do it guys i think that's gonna end it that is all of the projects i wanted to mention uh this time around again there are other ones i did see other solo games out there so let me know in the comments below did you see one uh in the last two weeks uh and even know of some coming up in the next week that you'd like uh like me to know about or like to mention feel free to do so in the comments below of course i just chose the ones that uh, popped out to me but i'm sure as you went through kickstarter you probably saw some things that you might have liked as always from the very beginning of the video remember do your research regardless of how many different projects you saw here today make sure you do your research previous projects on the creator on the game on the rules make sure the game fits what you're willing to spend to pick it up and uh, don't pick it up because anybody that's doing content tells you to, including myself. Make wise decisions and you won't regret anything. So thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate all the feedback on the channel. And as always, keep on rolling solo.